Hi friends, today we're going to talk about a really effective structure you can use for describing a map on your IELTS writing task one. Now, from my experience as an IELTS tutor, a lot of students mostly prepare for describing a graph for this writing task. But maps do come up quite a lot on the IELTS writing task one, so you really do need to know how to describe them well. In this lesson, we're going to go over a four-step structure you can use for writing about a map and I'm going to show you lots of phrases you can use for describing a map effectively. But before we start that, if you're new to this channel, hi, I'm teacher Luke from EnglishTestReady.com. If you're looking for an IELTS tutor, that's the website to go to. There you can find lessons from myself and lots of other qualified IELTS tutors. Anyway, back to this lesson. So like I mentioned, we're going to look at an effective four-step structure for describing maps. And here are the four steps. Step one is to identify the main features. Step two, to write an introduction. Step three, an overview. And step four, writing details. Each step is equally important, and I'll tell you why as we go through the video. So the first step is called identifying the main features, and this is so important because to get a good score for this writing question, you need to write about all of the main features. If you miss out some of the main features, then you will get a lower score for this writing question. So let me show you how to identify the main features now. Okay, so the first thing you've got to ask yourself is, what type of map is it? There might be different styles of maps. For example, this one here is a town. This one is very common. You might get an island, like this. You also might get a place, like a train station in this example, or a shopping mall, or a school, or a park, anything like that. Basically, the IELTS test can ask you to describe lots of different types of maps. So the first thing you've got to do is identify what is it they are asking you to describe. And the next thing you can do is to understand the question. And the questions are quite similar, but there are some important individual details in each question. Let me show you what I mean here. So this is what the question looks like on the IELTS test. The bottom paragraph is always the same. It says, summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant. That is always the same, it will never change. However, the top part is what we need to focus on. This question says, the maps show changes that occurred at Pacific Railway Station between 1998 and now. So those two points are really important. You need to identify what the map is generally showing and then you read the question and understand it. That's particularly important for writing your introduction, which we will cover later. But by looking at the map and reading the question, you'll know exactly what you've got to write about. And the next point is really important, is talking about the dates in the map. So what are the periods shown? This one is critical. So if you look here in this map, it says 1998 to now. So this point is critical because it will determine what tense you have to use when you're writing your answer. So in this example, it says from 1998 to now. So what tenses do you need to use? Well, you need to use the past tense for describing the 1998 map and then the present tenses for the now map. In particular, the present perfect should be used a lot in this question because you're describing actions that happened in the past which are still present and affecting now. And this is when we use the present perfect. Some other maps might also show the future. In that case, of course, you need to use the future tenses. And now we need to look at what are the main differences and similarities in the maps. So you need to identify the main differences, and this will likely be the majority of your written answer. So let's take this map, for example, and there are three major differences. The platforms and supermarket on the left, the shops and restaurant in the middle, and then the ticket office in the bottom right. And to get a band 7 or above, you need to identify and write about all of these major differences. Also, the similarities as well. So what features have remained the same? That's another question you can ask yourself. Well, not much has remained the same in these two maps, apart from the main platforms in the top right of the screen. And these platforms are an important feature on the maps, so you should mention that they have remained the same. Okay, so that's step one. It's identifying the main features, basically planning before you write. And you might now be asking, is it essential to do all this planning even before you begin writing? And the answer is yes, totally 100% essential. Because on the IELTS criteria, 
it says you have to be able to identify the main points. Let me show you here. So this is the scoring criteria for writing task one. And if we look over at task achievement on the left, at a band seven, which I guess most people want to achieve, it says here, clearly presents and highlights the key features. Whereas if you compare that to band four, does not cover all of the key features. So to get a band seven, you need to be able to identify and write about all of the key features. And that's why the planning stage is so important. Even though 20 minutes for writing this answer is not that long, you should take your time with the planning. It will make sure that you cover all of the key features in your answer and easily write more than 150 words. But of course, once you've finished planning, it is time to start writing and steps two to four will help you with that. So steps two to four are all about writing. We have an introduction, an overview, and then details. The IELTS criteria is very clear, and it says that you should include all of these three sections in your answer. Examiners will look for each section, introduction, overview, and then detailed paragraphs. The criteria also says this, but I'll talk about that more later. So let's start with the introduction. The introduction for this task is actually really simple. You just have to paraphrase the question. So basically you're looking at the question and you're going to answer this question. What do the maps show? And you only have to write one sentence for this. So that's quite easy. Let me show you an example. So let's use this map as an example. The question, as you remember, is the maps show changes that occurred at Pacific Railway Station between 1998 and now. So this is the question we have to rewrite or paraphrase. And here's my example. The two maps show how Pacific Railway Station changed from 1998 to the present day. So as you can see, this was quite a simple sentence. I'm sure you can write one just the same as this. You just have to reword the question, but include the same main information. So in this case, it was the name of the railway station and the dates included in the maps. Most introductions for maps will be very similar to this. So that's the introduction. Now step three is to write a general overview. And a lot of students ask me, do you need to write an overview for maps? Now, of course, for graphs and tables, writing an overview is very clear, but for maps, it can be a little bit vague. But the answer is yes, you do need to write an overview. If you look on the scoring criteria again, it says clearly, if you wanna get a band seven or above, that the student presents a clear overview of the main trends, differences, or stages. So even for describing a map, it is really important that you write a good overview. And I suggest you do it right after your introduction. It doesn't need to be long, one or two sentences is fine, but it needs to identify the general trends in the map. And here are some things you can consider for your overview. The first point, what are the major changes? You don't need to go into details just yet, but you do need to describe the major changes. For example, did something expand or grow or did it shrink? Are there more buildings, more parks? And what's the purpose of the changes? These are some things you can consider. One or two sentences is enough. And you can use some phrases to signal to the examiner that you're writing an overview. For example, in general, generally, overall, by and large, on the whole. These phrases signal that you're writing an overview. Here's my example. Overall, we can see that the station has been expanded with significantly more facilities available to customers now compared to 1998. So what's the overview in this example? Well, the station expanded and expanded to allow more facilities for customers. That's it, you don't need to go into more details yet. That is the overview of the general trend in this map. This was just one sentence and that's totally fine. And did you notice the tense I used in this answer? Let's take a look again. Okay, so what tense did I use? Well, of course, it was the present perfect. So this map we're describing now has a past and present date. So because of that, we want to use the present perfect to describe the changes. So the introduction and overview has been written and you did a good job. Now we're gonna look at the details, which are of course the most important paragraphs. To get over 150 words, you're probably going to need to write two paragraphs. And of course, you're gonna to need to go into details explaining carefully all of the main features. Let me show you how to do that now. So like I mentioned, you're gonna to need to write one or two paragraphs, most probably two to get over the 150 word mark. 
For this example today, in the first paragraph, I'm going to write about things that haven't changed. And then in the second paragraph, I'm going to write about all of the things that have changed. That's not the only way. You could talk about the major changes in paragraph one and then the less important ones in paragraph two. But I think this is quite good for this particular map we're talking about today. And it's something for you to keep in mind. And the next point is really important. So it's very important you don't just label. You have to actually describe the main changes in detail. Okay, so to get a band seven or above, you don't want to just label the differences. I mean, you don't want to just say, this has changed, this has changed, this has changed. Instead, you want to describe the changes in detail. And you use this by using descriptive language and language to show comparisons. There are lots of different phrases and words you can use for this, which will impress your examiner. Let me show you those now. So here are a bunch of useful phrases for describing a map. The first one is really important. It's called prepositions of place. We have phrases like at the top, in the corner, at the bottom, to the left, to the right, underneath, beneath, below, and also different phrases like in the background or in the foreground, in front of, directly opposite, exactly in the middle of. Lots and lots of phrases you can use to describe the location of things. Those phrases are so helpful for describing the location of things in the map. And this is what the examiner wants to see. They want to see your answers in detail. And using these phrases is a great way to describe the location of things in your map. There are also other phrases we can use. Comparison phrases like compared to, as opposed to, in comparison with, X was replaced by Y. In contrast to X, Y is. When comparing X and Y, we can see that. In this maps task, you do actually have to compare one map to the other and show the changes. Using phrases like this is a great way to do that. And when describing a map, oftentimes you're going to talk about buildings, new ones being built or old ones replaced. And you don't want to use the same words over and over again. Examiners hate that. So here are some different phrases you can use for buildings being built or replaced. So these verbs are used to describe building changes. Of course, we have build, like three new hospitals were built. We have construct, extend, expand, also remove. As you know, in the IELTS exam, it is important to use a range of vocabulary and examiners love that. All of these phrases will definitely help you get a better score for your vocabulary section on this writing task. So considering all of those key points I talked about for the detailed paragraphs, let me now show you a good sample answer. Even though the station has undergone massive renovations since 1998, a couple key features remain the same or have only slightly changed. Importantly, the four original platforms are in the exact same position in the top left of the station with the ticket office behind them. The ticket office is in the same location but has been extended. Moreover, the cafe has remained directly behind the platforms. So this paragraph is talking about all the things that remain the same. And the second paragraph then talks about the things that have changed. The second map shows the number of platforms has almost doubled to seven since 1998, where there used to be only four platforms. The three new platforms have been built to the left of the original ones. In addition, a supermarket has been built behind the new platforms on the bottom right of the map. Moreover, the toilets have been replaced by a restaurant with two shops next to it. These are all positioned in between the old and new platforms. And here's the answer in full. Use this as a sample and analyze it for your own IELTS preparation. Okay, and that's how you describe a map. But hold on, you also need to describe graphs in IELTS task one as well. And this video here talks about a good structure you can use for that. I also give lots and lots of vocabulary to help you describe graphs really well. So I'll see you there. Bye.